So today I just want to kind of talk about um, visualizing large data sets with Elasticsearch and Kibana and how we're using OSM to help us do that. So I'm uh, Nathan Reese. I'm a software engineer at Elastic. I work on the uh, Maps application that I'll be demoing a little bit. And um, I work on Kibana. And if you want to see anything or reach out to me, I'm, my GitHub handle is uh, nreese. So I want to start off talking about Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch is a distributed open source search for analytics engine that can do all types of different data. So you can do full text search, you can do numerical data, you can index geospatial data, it can be structured, it can be unstructured. But what I really like about Elasticsearch and what really brought me to uh, kind of made me excited about it as a developer is it's got really simple REST APIs. So it's really easy to access the data directly from the data store and it's distributed by nature. So this means that you can search at your data super fast and it will scale to meet your needs as your data needs grow in the future. And then out of the box, it's got this concept called aggregations and I'll get into those a little bit, but that's really what lets you kind of analyze your data at scale. And then it's got fantastic geospatial support. So it's great for drawing maps and anything that you would wanna draw. So Elasticsearch is part of the Elastic stack. And today I'm pretty much just gonna be talking about Elasticsearch which is the data store, and then Kibana, which is our visualization engine. And then at the bottom of the uh, stack, there's Beats and Logstash for getting data into Elasticsearch, but I won't be talking too much about data ingest today. So uh, Elasticsearch stores doc documents. So this is a very uh, simple way of when you're setting up your index, you need to tell Elasticsearch how you want each of your fields to be indexed. So in this example, I'm just kind of showing you how you would start to index some geospatial information. So I'm setting up a cities index that's gonna have just some uh, metadata, but the ones to point out here are just the center, which is gonna be indexed as a geo point, and then an outline, which is gonna be indexed as a geo shape. And then once I've set up my index, I can just start putting documents into it. So this is just a HTTP post call. And uh, the center is just a latitude and longitude. And then the shapes are just uh, geo JSON that's been uploaded. And then once you have all of your geospatial data into Elasticsearch, you can just start writing geospatial queries against it. So this is just an example of a bounding box where I'm looking for any cities that are inside of uh, a bounding box. And I could even do more complicated uh, queries against that, that shape. So if I have an outline of a city, I can see any um, cities that are within this uh, envelope that contain it. But what's really interesting about Elasticsearch is aggregations. So aggregations are how you bucket and bin your data and then calculate metrics on those groups of data. So if, if you've got a data set that spans over 100 computers, you can't return all of that data to a single client to display. So then the question becomes, well, how do you actually see what's in your data? And, and that's what aggregations do. So before you, it was just a very simple, small collection of documents. It could be this small or it could be you know billions of documents. And with aggregations, is what we're gonna do is we're gonna group those documents into logical groups and then calculate values based on all of the documents that fall in those logical groups. So this is a really simple example where we're just uh, splitting our documents by the color of the document and then we're just gonna be running an average for the value of, of, of those documents. So is what's gonna be returned to the client is not the collection of documents, but is gonna be a bucket value pairings that get sent to the client. So this is fantastic because now all of your data stays in the database and you're just getting out the, the metrics that you wanna display and you wanna render. So the payload of data that's getting returned to your client is super small and it's super easy to see how you, you could turn this into a, a pie chart or something like that. But where this gets really powerful is that you can start to nest your aggregations as deep as you want to nest them. So you can really start to get into smaller and smaller groups and start calculating metrics for smaller and smaller groups. So in this example, we're doing a nested aggregation where we're not only splitting our uh, data by color, but we're also splitting it by shape. So that way you can start getting back, okay, well, all my squares, I can see all the average for all my squares and for uh, all the diamonds. And you can see how this correlates one-to-one -one if you were doing a bar chart and you wanted to start doing a nested bar chart, how you could start breaking your, your data into each of those groups. And what's great about Elasticsearch is it's not just terms or dates, they also have geospatial aggregations. So you can start to break your data up into grids and then calculate metrics for each grid uh, and do this all at the server. So then you get back these really small pieces of information that are super easy to visualize. So this is an example of a geotile grid aggregation and is what this does is the, the geotile grids gives you uh, tiles that are the, act, 
exact same size as your web mercator tiles. So it maps one to one with a web mercator graph. And it's really easy to start to display really super large data sets that are clustered and grouped on the server. And then you just get the metrics for those back on, on the client side. And then uh, we can even run aggregations such as a centroid aggregation. So that way you can put your dot in the, where most of the activity is inside the grid instead of putting your dot in the center of the, the grid cell. So then is what's useful is we have ingest processors. So if we're analyzing logs or something with an IP address, we can go look up that IP address and give it a geospatial location, but we can also give it an ISO 2 code of the country that that um, log either was originated from or ended up going to. And then is what you have is you have this data set that is now tagged with all of these ISO 2 codes, which are country codes, and we can just do a terms aggregation. So now we can start getting all these really useful metrics to see all, all of your documents that originated in the United States or Canada or Mexico. So now to visualize this, this kind of begs the question of where are we gonna get these polygons to actually start to merge this data with? So that way we can show you a nice polygon of the United States and not just show you the text that says US. So that's where OSM comes in. So uh, Yuri started to, uh, to talk about SOFOX a little bit and also a little bit of how we use SOFOX to build um, GeoJSON files and topo JSON files of a lot of different political data sets throughout the world. So we have world countries and then we try to get to every second level inside of each country. So like states in the United States or provinces in Canada and um, all over the place. So it all starts with a Sparkle query and the Sparkle query goes into a Wikidata federated service, which returns a bunch of metadata. Um, and inside of that metadata has the tags that we're gonna be doing the joining with, like the ISO 2 codes, uh, the name, names in different languages. And it's also gonna have an OSM re relation ID. And then we'll use the OSM relation ID to get the OSM polygons that have already been put into a separate data store and joined. And then there's a process that does some simplification and out the end of this comes a GeoJSON or TopoJSON file that has those administrative boundaries. So um, as you can imagine, we have a bunch of Sparkle queries for each of these different data sets. So they're all version controlled at this uh, Git repo here. So if you're interested to see on how we make any of these uh, polygons, this is where they're all version controlled and where all the data comes from. And then once we have all these polygons made, we actually just host these on the web on something we call the Elastic Map Service. And uh, we host all the administrative boundaries, but then we also host some tile sets as well. And those tile sets are also made from OSM data. So now that we have all of these polygons that are now web accessible, and then we have our nice REST interface where we can start getting all of this metadata and then do these joins, that's when we can actually start making some really powerful visualizations. So that's where the Elastic Maps comes in and where we can actually start visualizing everything inside of Kavana. So I'll kind of switch over to a demo and kind of show how we actually do this. So I'm actually inside of Kavana right now, and this is an application called Canvas, which allows you to make really uh, media print type things and uh, PowerPoint slides. And the nice thing is, is you could hook this up to live data. So as you're going through your slide presentation, it could be hitting live data. I didn't really need that for this. Um, so to launch the Maps application, you go over here to, to Maps and you go ahead and get started. And this will load up the Maps application. And this is your interface into the data that you've ingested into Elasticsearch now. So the, the goal of this application is we wanted to make it really easy for non-technical users to be, create very rich and powerful maps that tell the story from their data. And when I'm done with the map, I'll actually show you how you can embed this in dashboards. So that way there's, you can tell your story with lots of other dimensions, you know, besides just geospatial dimensions. So to get started with maps, it's all about layers. So you start by adding layers and I'm not gonna go through each of these, but um, the, the ones that I'm gonna go into are our Elasticsearch layers. So that's just getting raw documents from Elasticsearch and then those geo grids that we were showing getting data out of Elasticsearch. So is what I've got here is I've just got some sample data loaded up that ships with Kibana. So if you, you wanted to try this out, you could just try it out. And uh, it's just log data, Apache 2 log data that's just kind of randomized. So we'll go ahead and start with our um, grid aggregations just to kind of getting a good example of where our data actually lives. 
So I'll go ahead and display it as rectangles so you can kind of see the, the boxes that are coming from those, those geotile grid aggregations. So is, is what we're doing is we're um, binning all of our data in Elasticsearch into these boxes and we're calculating just a simple count right now. And then is what's getting returned to the client is just the actual um, center of that box and then the metric of the count. So we're not sending all of our data back to the client. So this is what lets it scale because all of your data is staying in the cloud or wherever you're running Elasticsearch and you're just getting back the, the data that you need to actually display on the client. But I'm actually gonna switch, switch this over to a heat map because this kind of just displays a little bit nicer. And I'll go ahead and add this later and I'll give it a name of heat map. And then um, we can add a bunch of different other metrics. I'll add one new one where we'll just do the sum of the data that, that's getting sent across. So now it's no longer the count, it's just how much data is actually coming across. And um, I'll go ahead and have this turn off at maybe zoom level six. And then when I get to zoom level six, maybe that's when I wanted to start displaying actual just raw documents. Because at that point, I, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have an aggregated view. So then I can come in here and now as I zoom in, I'm seeing an aggregated view where I, I might have a ton of data. And then when it makes sense, I can kind of switch that away to a more uh, document level view. But the nice thing about this is that I can style all of my documents based on actual data from the documents. So I can come in here and if I wanted to, I could start to do different icons so I could start to represent different things. And this is from the Maki -E icon set. So I've got a pretty rich way to express all of my data, but I'll just stick with the circle for now. But let's say for, for fill color, you know, instead of just showing this kind of green color, I wanted to get a range of colors so I could start seeing, um, let's say the hour of the day that all these requests were coming in. So now that the lighter circles are coming in early and then the darker circles are coming in at later times of day. And let's change their size so that way I can see um, which ones are going to be large requests and which ones are gonna be pretty small requests. So again, we're starting to make a pretty rich map here that has a lot of, of uh, can, can, can really tell the story of our data set. And I didn't have to do anything very technical. You know, it's just there for you. And I'll go ahead and add the, the chloropleth map that we were showing in the beginning that uses the OSM data. So I'll start with that by going to my, um, EMS boundaries, and I'll go in here and just click the world countries. So now I've got all of the world countries. And then now if I wanted to actually style these with my own data, I can set up a terms join where I'll, I'll come in and I'll say, um, this is the metadata that we've collected from Wikidata. And I know that my data has this ISO 2 code. So I'll go ahead and say that I, that's the key that I wanna join on. And then my right source will be my data set, the sample logs, and in here, uh, we've got the ISO too. So we'll go ahead and say the source of where this data is coming from. And now I have a new property added to uh, these polygon shapes that is actually joined from my data set. So I can get the count of documents for each of these countries. So I can just kind of come in here and see where a bulk of our web requests are starting to come from. So I'll go ahead and save this map. Because what's nice is there's lots of data that isn't very good for displaying on maps. So let's go ahead and start making some different visualizations that show some different dimensions and see how we can put all these together to really tell our story and really explore hypotheses and just kind of understand our, our data set. So we'll go over into Visualize, which is another Kibana application for making visualizations such as bar charts and pie charts. And we can go in here and let's just see a date histogram of uh, what our data looks like. So we'll do a, a vertical bar chart. And on our um, X axis, we'll go ahead and just do a date histogram. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use those aggregations to split our data set up into date buckets. And then on the Y axis, we can display uh, any metrics for each of those buckets that we like. We'll go ahead and just do count. And then for the sake of time, I'll just go ahead and save this. And we'll call this our date histogram. And 
And then we can we'll call the state of the map. Then we can go over to dashboards. And what dashboard allows us to do is it allows us to build out any collection of visualizations or maps that we need to really start to tell our, uh, tell our story. So we'll go in here and we'll create a new, a new map and we'll add everything that we've just done. So we'll add the map that we just created. And then we'll add the uh, visualization that we just created. Oops. Move this around a little bit. So what's nice is this is completely customizable and you can kind of create anything that you want in order to, to tell your data story. And on the map side, I can shrink my legend if it's getting in the way, but what's nice is everything's interactable now. So if I wanna focus in on a certain area, I can just come in here and let's just draw a little um, bounding box. So I can come in here and say, this is an area that's interesting to me. So I can draw my bounding box and this will create a filter that not only impacts my map, but also impacts everything else as well. All right, looks like we got a bug. I'm on a developer build, so everything might not work. We'll try a shape. This might work a little bit better. All right, so no filters, but uh, let's add a pie chart to this. It might be a little more interesting. So this pie chart is showing us the operating systems and we can come in here and we can say, oh, well, let's see what's going on with our Windows 7 users. And then this filter has now applied to our map. So we're seeing just the uh, chloropleth map that now represents the uh, web logs that were coming in from Windows 7 users. So for this, I'll open it up if there's any questions from anyone. Yes. Say that again. You, you have to have the relationship between the OSM IDs. So when the polygons were originally created in SOFOX, we queried uh, Wikidata to get a bunch of different metadata fields. So that way the polygons have a bunch of different metadata fields. So your data does not have to contain the OSM ID. It contain any of those other metadata fields. So in this example, the polygons have the ISO 2 code and then our data set also has the ISO 2 code. So that's how we're able to do the join. For the, uh, the tile or the grids, yep. can you customize the grid size? Or? So you can set the zoom level of the grid size, but the grid size itself is tied to the Web Mercator tiling size. So uh, you could definitely get more fine-grained grid cells by specifying a higher zoom level when you make the request. Uh, can you support disputed territory? So for example, like you can send me like a dictionary. So right now, we, uh, we just have the OSM territories. And uh, I'll let Nick answer the disputed territories question. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Oh. <laughs>
So this, you know, I've never used Kubata that often. So if I want to get smarter, like I understand everything you're doing, but if I want to get smarter, the tutorials, or how would I? What's out there for me to get smarter on this? So if I want to throw something like this, I want to display something like this. Yep. Where would I go to kind of get smarter in Kibana and in Elasticsearch to kind of figure all this stuff out? So if you go to Elastic.co, there's a bunch of webinars, and actually there's been a couple of geospatial webinars that will go over uh, the Maps application in much more detail with uh, much richer use cases. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a bunch of um, documentation at Elastic.co. But yeah, the webinars are definitely the best place to start. Well, thank you everyone very much for spending your time with me today.